Good afternoon and welcome to this BIM up session uh, which is focused around coal form design in advanced design. So I'm Jimmy Aldida and I'm a, um, a solutions technical specialist here at Grey Tech and I'll be delivering today's BIM up session for you guys. So <clears throat> a bit of an overview of what we have planned for today's session. So this session will be um, all about coal form design so basically the uh, functionality that we have in advanced design for you to perform your cold form design okay so first of all to start off with I'll just be sharing a little bit of a background about cold form design and cold form steel in general for those of you who are new to the concept um, maybe you're just starting out in the industry or it's not something you've quite covered before so I'll just share a bit of a background for those of you who are uh, quite new to that We'll then look at uh, the specific type of sections which uh, we can design for using advanced design um, and I'll be showcasing advanced design 2023 for this which is only a matter of weeks away so <clears throat> this is advanced design 2023 will be launched within the next few weeks but I'll be showing you a sneak peek before the release uh, just to show you the sections that we have advanced design um, <clears throat> the design effects and then also finally we'll take a look at the design results so perform a FEM analysis and then take a look at the specific um, design checks according to the cold form uh, clauses for the Euro in the Euro codes so first up then uh, what is cold form design or what is cold form steel for those of you who are uh, not quite familiar with the concept so general background here, uh, cold form, cold form, the term cold form generally refers to a type of uh, manufacturing which is used to uh, manufacture these members. So it's different technique as opposed to standard UB or UC sections, okay, in that uh, um, when a uh, cold form member is manufactured, uh, it's created using a rolling technique, okay. So we you generally have uh, you start off with a metallic coated uh, sheet okay and from that sheet you then use the, the machines and uh, use a rolling technique to form um, a certain section from that okay so you start off with a sheet which is then in basic terms folded into a, a struct into a, a member the uh, so cold form steel work is generally used in the light frame uh, industry so that can be for for example light framed um, SFS systems wall systems um, roofing perhaps trusses or even floors 
some of the common uses are uh, using it for joists, um, studs in case of light framed, uh, lightweight framing, and also tracks and headers that go uh, you'd use as part of the wall elements there. You also use it for headers, angles, and uh, perhaps truss members. Now, one thing I haven't quite mentioned on that list is also purlins. So it's quite commonly used for purlins as well. Okay, so we'll then take a look at uh, sections in advanced design. Right, so what type of sections do we have in advanced design then? So the type of section that we have in advanced design, uh, we have a variety of sections in advanced design. So that can be omega sections, um, C sections, zeta sections as well. So I'll now show you in advanced design um, basically it'll show me selecting these different types of sections from the library in advanced design so these can be either um, using the database so we have a quite a wide range of uh, manufacturers which are included in our great tech library which for you to choose from you can choose your sections from there alternatively with the latest release so up until now um, it was mostly the use of the sections in the library and just a few sections you had to choose from use defined sections but with the latest release you can define almost any type of these sections any type of omega sections any type of c z or zeta sections you can define any type of these also a sigma section you can define your own parameters um, your own sizes thicknesses um, all the parameters there so you can then carry that through to design and i'll just show you now uh, what that looks like in advanced design 2023. Okay, so let's take a look at these sections in advanced design. Then. Okay, so we can either choose the uh, the sections from the library. So here in the library, you can see we have an extensive range in the library manager. We have various manufacturers up and down the country and also internationally as well. So Ayrshire, uh, quite a common one. We have Albion. Um, we also have some Metsec sections as well, to name a few. So from here, I'll choose, for example, I'll just show you what we can choose from here. Metsec, Z and C sections. We have all of those in the library. Alternatively, this is um, with the 2023 version, the latest version offers the ability to do, to um, add user-defined sections into your model. So here we're looking at uh, a user definition dialog box and from here you can choose your type of section as we saw earlier we've got Omega uh, Omega sections so if we look at Omega okay so we get to define the height width um, the width of your flanges and also the rounding radius along with the, the thickness type of lamination for this instance we're interested in cold formed but you can also have cold form and rolled the blend form and also the standard cold rolled okay so that's the omega um sigma sections is also an interesting one we also have sigma sections if with the sigma sections we have other variants so you can have inclined lips or asymmetric uh, sections as well where the <coughs> top and bottom flanges are of a different size so again with here we from here we can see we can uh, assign our own um, values to the different parameters <clears throat> up next is then the Z section so we have on offer here is a Z section or you can have a Z section with inclined lips um, and also a and this a different type of Z section with, um, with other lips on there so C sections we have C sections a little bit simpler compared to the ones we've just seen uh, but we have on offer here are uh, asymmetric sections, standard cold form C, and also another type of C uh, which is asymmetric. We also have cold form L sections, so angular sections are now available to design uh, in cold form here with advanced design. Finally, most interesting and perhaps the uh, most uh, different of them all is a zeta section. So a zeta section has uh, a few more parameters due to the complex nature of the shape that you have you can play with here 
So here we can see we have control over the lip angles as well, in addition to the various other parameters. Okay, so they are these are the sections that we can design for in advanced design. So number three, so we want to be able to know um, the design effects. So I'll share with you the design effects which are taken into consideration in advanced design when you're designing for any type of these members. So let's take a look at these. So the design effects that can be considered um, are the following. So we have torsion and warping. We also have uh, imperfections and second order effects. So with the second order effects, you have control over adding bedding on there, nodal springs. Um, you can also uh, you also have control over various other parameters. So I'll show you exactly uh, how these are used in advanced design. I'll take you through an example on uh, perhaps some uh, joists where I will be making these changes. So very interesting effects here that we need to be able to consider as per the Euro codes. So let's see these in action with the design effects. Okay, so with the design effects, we look at the properties here. Um, we can turn on second order effects. If I turn this on, this then bring, brings into play the uh, definition. So with the definition, we get to define nodal springs. Okay, so we can define nodal springs in here. Um, it automatically detects your spans for that, by the way. So if you have a purlin spanning over say three supports it will automatically uh, divide that uh, accordingly into two supports okay so I accidentally clicked off that's so just go back into that so nodal springs then here we're looking at uh, the spans which is automatically picked up we can't see the model here on screen yet so i've left that for the next step okay so here we've got a series of spans so the start and end points at zero and five meters. You can choose the position as well, whether that's uh, about the top flange, bottom flange, uh, or about the neutral axis. And you can also add an eccentricity on top of that, along with uh, restraints in certain directions. Okay, so this is the other end, so we can always alter these as well. Although it picks it up according to the supports, you can still uh, change those accordingly. So if you have intermediate bracing or uh, and for example anti-sag rods, you can also take that into consideration here. Okay, so we have a status, we can choose these to be uh, a custom. For example, we can have hinged effects in there as well, or restrained about uh, translation in the, in the Y direction or rotation. Or we can have, choose them to have uh, fully freed ends. Okay, some of the examples there. Um, we also have some bedding settings. Okay, so for the beddings, if you have, for example, uh, any sheeting over purlins, or if you have a, a deck, so this is where uh, the bedding function comes in handy. Here you can add your, your spans um, and then assign a stiffness from either the, the sheeting or the, the membrane, which is sat on top of the members. Okay, so I'll just add a quick span here. You can see it's added it for five meters, uh, and then you have to calculate the stiffness. So, usually for this for example, which I'll show you later, I'm interested in KRX value. Okay, so I will have uh, I'll use a value which I've calculated already. Okay, but you would need to refer to the Eurocodes to, uh, to calculate this uh, this value. Okay, in radians, so you can also add in a shear as well in the field. You can add a shear force on top of that. Okay, for example, here we can insert, for instance, 100 kilonewtons if we wanted. So that's the bedding there in a nutshell. Um, we also have imperfections to Eurocode 3. So here with the dominant, dominant uh, Egan shape, it uh, takes into account a scale factor, so length over certain denominator. Um, with the parabolic variation, although you can't... Uh, uh, I seem to add the, the uh, sorry, with dominant, you can't add the spans in. With parabolic, you can add the spans in. Okay, so it's either by scale factor, which is for the dominant Egan shape, or by span um, for the parabolic variation, if you're using that. Okay. 
we can also offset loads okay so if you want to apply the the loads um, which are offset to the member itself you can choose a variety of conditions so eccentricity it's very simple you choose the type of eccentricity if it's as uh, you know top left right uh, bottom left right all in the center so there's marked with a series of points here that we can see points one two three you can apply the the loads to a certain point on on the shape here okay so uh, basically you're applying the loads to certain stress point okay so obviously if the loads applied uh, to the centroid it will behave the member will behave differently to the load being applied for example on the top left corner okay so we can really um, define loads um, um, on basically a detailed part of, of the member Right, so design results. So this is the interest, most interesting part of it all, where I will uh, show you a structure and I will uh, um, consider all of the design effects along with uh, a variety of different cold wall sections which I'll include in the model. And then I'll take you through some design results and the calculations behind that uh, cold form, behind those cold form checks. Right, so here I have a uh, a simple mezzanine structure, so it's a two-seated structure that you can see here. If I rotate around, you can see what it consists of. Um, so what I'm going to do is um, assign cold form members to the intermediate beams here, which you see that make up the floor deck. Okay, so if I turn on the labels here, we can see that some of them, uh, I'll just label these to make it easier. I'll have a C stud in there, uh, Z beams. Um, perhaps a sigma, zig sigma beam or zeta beam. I'll just uh, change some of these section sizes. So for this C stud here, I'll pick one from the library. So we'll choose a uh, Metsec C section. So I'm very used to using Metsec. Uh, that's probably the most common one that I've used during my time designing for structures. So I'll pick a section from here. We'll pick a 172. Okay, so it looks about right. So let's go with a 172 section for this particular stud section here. Uh, next up is the Z beam. So for this Z beam, we'll choose a Z section. So this time I'll choose a Z section from library. So sorry, from the use defined section. So here I'm defining my own section here. I'm not picking it from the library. If something, if for whatever reason it's not in the library, I can define my own section in here. All I have to do is input the the uh, the size of the section. It will uh, compute the characteristics along with the steel design based on those. Okay, so I'll just reduce the size of this one. So I go for something which is a similar depth, so 180 deep. Uh, we need to reduce the flange here. Okay, so 50 for the flange. We'll go or two millimeter thickness. Sounds about right. Okay, so we now have a C stud and a Z beam. This one here, I'll just relabel this one. Okay, so relabel that to a sigma section. So sigma beam here. And for this one, I will choose a sigma section. Okay, so it should say sigma beam, but I'll change that afterwards. <clears throat> um, right, so this one picked from the, the library. So we have a mixture here. We've got a user-defined section, and we've got a couple of sections from the library. So let's scroll through to find a sigma section here. And you can see there are a number of manufacturers up and down the country and all over the world here. So we have um, several entries in here. So Ayesha, okay, so Ayesha offers a Z to section. Okay, so uh, I'll choose a Z to section for this one and then I'll change the label afterwards. So a Z to section, we'll go for this one um, and I'll just rename that to a Zeta, okay, instead of Sigma. Okay, so Zeta. Uh, and the third one. We also need a third type in here, just so we have different types. OK, 
think I'll add the third one there in a sec. So what I'm going to do is um, um, change this element so it spans over both uh, bays here. Okay, so perhaps I'm better off deleting the beam on the right hand side and then extending the zeta and the z section all the way across. This is so I can show you um, <clears throat> what how it considers the, the span for the uh, second order effects. Okay, so let's turn this one over. So expanding over about 10 meters. So each bay is around 5 meters. So the total length of uh, 10 meters that we have on these uh, members here. What I can also do is let's also define some uh, releases on the ends here. Okay, so I'll just just make sure I display the releases first of all. Yeah, so they look like they've been turned on. So let's just uh, enable some uh, some uh, releases on there. Okay, so if you zoom in, you can see the section in detail here. So it's a really detailed out, um, section there. So I've enabled <coughs> the releases for rotation about uh, Y and Z, just for this particular example. We'll do the same on the other side. We can also do uh, releases for translation as well if we wanted. So we have seven degrees of freedom to play with here. Right, uh, now we need to do the same for the Z-beam. Rotation at both ends. Okay, so that looks about right now. Right, so now we'll introduce a third type. So we've got Zeta, a Z-beam and a C-section. This one will be our Sigma beam. Okay, so we'll also change the name of Zeta Pernus to Zeta beam. It's a bit of a perfectionist, doesn't quite look right there. Um, so we have our three or four different types here. Okay, and we'll choose a Sigma beam for that. There we go, Sigma, Zeta, and Z. Now, first of all, uh, add releases to this and then choose a section size. Okay, so here again I will uh, I can choose one from the library. Okay, so I can choose one from use it use defined section. I'll go to somewhere something along the lines of Albion. <coughs> so Albion have a zig sigma section. Just pick a section from here. So the smallest one here is around 200 millimeters deep, those are a little bit thicker, so we'll go with 200 beam uh, deep section there. Right, so I've got my different sections here. Okay. Right. So I hadn't applied that change for some reason. Okay, so away we go then, now on to the design effects if you like. So let's have a look at the properties uh, to do with the second order effects. So with the deflections actually we, let's define deflection limits. So just turn on deflections and I'll just change the limits here so 200. Uh, I need to be careful reference length here. I need to impose the length because they're spanning over uh, two bays here. I need to make sure I impose a length there. So that's around, we'll just see if it lets uh, let me measure that. Okay, so it's not seeming to snap, but from memory, I think they were around 5 meters. Each bay was 5 meters, so we have a total of 10 meters. So imposed in here, I'll put in 5 meters. Okay, so that's the reference, uh, reference length for one of these bays. Uh, over then into the second order effects, so I'll just uh, enable those and then define some of the advanced stability settings. So nodal springs here, so it's automatically detected here that we can see um, three supports that we have, so it's spanning over two bays, three supports, okay, so we can see here uh, over the 10 meters from that end to here to there. Right, so um, nodal springs then, we can add these about uh, a certain position if we want. Okay, along with uh, the uh, degrees of freedom. So I'll just, for this example, choose uh, for these to be hinged. 
Okay, so let's see what sort of effect this has on the structure. So hinged um, ends there, and then over to the bedding. So over in the bedding, I will uh, add a span in. Okay, so just assuming we have some sort of uh, decking or metal sheeting over the top of these purlins to give it some sort of stiffness. So about the upper flange, so the upper fibre, because these will sit the underside of that. And then I will assign a value here. Okay, so just for this example, we'll go for 0 0.5, but this is something you'd need to calculate uh, by hand, okay? I'll leave the shear field empty just here. Um, so that's the, the bedding that we have. Imperfections, okay. <clears throat> so here, I need to adjust the scale factor. So, so a thousand, and then if I look at the code, I could half that brings that down to 500 okay but since i've got a length of 10 meters it needs to reflect that so i'll probably stick with 500 in this case or okay so there are the imperfections uh, actually let's go for 1000 here okay just be on the safe side Right, loads offset. So to offset these loads, then as I was saying earlier, we want to apply them about a certain point, uh, apply them at a certain stress point, okay? So we get accurate results. So if we choose here to apply them on the top left, so that's generally right on the corner, okay? So we can see here on the left corner of each of those members. Okay, so we've defined our uh, design effects and second order effects, if you like. We're now ready to uh, perform the analysis. So first of all, we will uh, perform a FEM analysis on this to view some um, forces. We'll then perform a steel design on just a few of these members, okay, just to save time. I'm not going to calculate the whole structure here, but just to pick a few elements, mainly the ones which we have chosen as uh, cold form sections, to show you what the calculations look like and how they uh, sort of differ to your traditional um, steel design. Okay, so now it's running the firm analysis. Seems to have meshed the structure. We have a series of nodes and done the steel design. Okay, right, so if I post process at this point here, we see we have some displacements. Okay, so this uh, tends to be dis uh, deflecting a little bit more than the zeta and sigma beams. So if I select this particular member, we can also show forces on here. That's due to the dead load. Okay, not so much. Uh, perhaps different will show something a bit more. In case that's as expected. So I've had a look at the general sort of behaviour here, how it's behaving. Yeah. Right, okay. Um now over to the steel results so this is the most interesting of uh, all the results or perhaps the most interesting part for those of you being patiently waiting to this part for this part so if we look at the deflections to start off with okay so the z beam is fairly undersized i'd say it's it's not as good in deflection when we compare it to the zeta or the sigma section okay so if we look at the ends here we can see them in detail if you missed it before Okay, very detailed profiles there for uh, Z, Zeta and Sigma sections. Okay, so of those, the Sigma section seems to be the strongest in deflection. That might be because it's a little bit deeper. Um, work ratio, we also have a work ratio for the strength. And this is the maximum work ratio we're looking at here. Okay, so that tends to be working a little bit harder as, com as compared to the the other sections. If we take a look at the shape sheet here, this will then show us the results for the coal form design resistance. So here we can see where that 174% is coming from. All right, so these checks are basically as per your codes, and it's, these are different checks for specifically for cold form design members. So it's carried out the torsion warping effects to give you uh, all these additional calculations here. So you've got direct stress, shear stress, von Mises, uh, critical load factor. So uh, we have the uh, the full package here, as you can see. Uh, same will apply for this section here, the Z beam. Okay, and I will also select a 
uh, just a standard UB section just to show you how different these, these results look for that. So for the cold form design resistance, there we can see the, over, the biaxial bending for this one seems to be the, uh, the governing check. Okay, so the one at the front, perhaps uh, this one doesn't work, so I didn't select that. Let's choose this one. So this is a UB section. Right, so UB section, you see how it differs. So it's for the shear and bending as, as opposed to the cold form, these were 6.14. These are as per the standard 6.2 clause of, of Eurocode. So if I go back into here, in case you missed it, 6.1. So it's referring to clause 6.1 instead of 6.2 for those uh, for the bending by actual shear checks. So actually all of that is 6.1 uh, as opposed to 6.2. We can also have a look at a, a detailed report. So if we want to take this a step further and just understand how it's arriving at those numbers. Okay, so if you really want to interrogate where those numbers are coming from, um, what those calculations look like, we can also open the detailed report. Okay, so this will allow us to check the exact calculations. We can also format them if we wanted. So if we wanted to adjust anything in there or add our own calculations, we are free to make those changes. So I'll just quickly open the detailed report. So it's instantly generated a detailed report. I don't have to generate a full report for this, by the way. So I can instantly access these by opening the detailed report. So here we can see exactly how it's arrived at those checks for the bending uh, by axial and also the, uh, the stresses as well. Okay, so they are they're the numbers that it's used. Okay, and it also shows you the worst case, uh, the combination that results in that. It generally seems to be class 4. So it's to carry that out for all of the elements here. So we are, again, for Mises, shear stress, direct stress. So we can see exactly how it's arrived at those ratios. For Mises seems to be very on the high side here, so 95%. Okay, so... To our direct stress is over, so 104%. Um, the rest seem to be fairly low. Okay, so shear, direct stress is a bit high than expected. Um, okay, so here they are basically the checks that we can see in, uh, in detail. And it has the exact reference to the equations there as well. Okay, so those are the design results for our cold form structure here in a nutshell. Okay, so that uh, brings me to the end of the demonstration. So now I'd like to conclude the session. Um, at this point, I'll open up a Q&A session. So for those of you uh, who have some questions related to what I've shown today uh, or if there's anything else in general to do with structural design or around any of our products or Autodesk products please feel free to uh, drop a question in the Q&A pane and I will pick those up for you so um, it's bye from me on the mic for now um, and I will see you on the next session hopefully bye for now